Hi, this is Paul from globaltradingsoftware.com and this is a quick tutorial for those that are subscribing to our Guardian Zones, putting it on the chart and uh, what settings you can change. But again, everything is automated with this, so you just, unless you're a sophisticated trader and want to make adjustments, everything is working straight out of the box. So once you've loaded it up, uh, you need to right click on the chart Go to indicators and find the guardian zones. Once you've added those, there are some settings. These are all predefined and, and default. So the native is the actual current time frame that you're on. So I'm on the five minute high Kanashi right now on MES. And then there's the 15, the 30, the 60, the daily and the weekly. So the settings are all the same in there. So I'll just choose 15 minute to begin with. So it's enabled. Uh, the swing size is two. Again, you can adjust this, but this has been totally optimized. The zone respect score minimum is two. The zone swing count minimum is three. The zone size maximum is 0 0.75, and that's a percentage. If you just hover over there, each one, it actually shows you what it tells you what it's for. Def you know, the zone size maximum. If I hover over there, defines a maximum vertical average range distance that a zone may span to be considered of value. Okay, um, and then there's there's the colours and all that sort of thing. So zone respect score defines a minimum amount of price respect that a zone needs to be considered valid. Okay, and then the higher the value, the more price must show a pattern of reacting to that particular zone. And then the swing size. So again, these are already predefined and default and work straight out of the box. But if you're a sophisticated trader, you can mess around with these a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to click apply. And it's going to, you see it calculating there. It's, it's calculating all the zones upon the chart here. Okay, so if I just zoom out a little bit, you'll see all of the zones on here. Um, whether that's the weekly, the daily, the 60, the 30, the 15, or in this case, we're on high Kanashi. So one of the things we need to consider straight away <coughs> is uh, the actual data series. So when we go to the data series, we need a minimum, a minimum of 2,000 bars. So if I were to just put that 2,001 bars and click apply, okay. This is just to ensure that um, we get enough data through for the logic to work out the zones correctly. Okay. Some of the other tools we get here are we can show the previous zones. You'll see them all appear there and disappear. You can also show the swings. And all it does is put little... Um, blue dots, well, blue circles around the swings that are being calculated by the automated uh, support resistance zone. So the Guardian zones, uh, it shows you those swings. And I'll leave them on for now. So color-wise, we are a very dark purple for a weekly zone. The gray, which will disappear in a minute, is a daily zone. 60 minute is a pinky purple. 30 minute is green. 15 minute is blue, and then you are left with the current time frame. Okay, that native. So, again, this is the five minute high Kanashi on MES. We can see actually at this point, this is when this zone was printed, and it goes out to the right. Now, the logic within the software will determine whether that zone remains or not, depending on how it's tested over a certain period of time. You'll see the swing points here, uh, which will be used to calculate further zones in the future if uh, those rules are met. You can see the blue circle here and here, 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 and so on and so forth. You can see these two were in this actual particular zone. If you switch the 15 minute back on now, you can see where a 15 minute and the current time frame zone overlaps. These are very, very strong zones. And this is this is really defining this range at this point here. 
and again we've got um, 15 and the current five minute Heikinashi really converging at that point. We put the 30 minute on, you can see there's some further down here. Just switch that off again. You can see this um, current five minute Heikinashi yellow here. If I just click the 30, that overlaps one of them as well. So very, very, very strong. Put the 60 on. You're just starting to build up the pitch here now. <clears throat> so you can see that 3940 to 3960 is on the current time frame, the 15, the 30, and the 60 minute time frame. So this is a very, very strong support zone here, and you are not going to trade short into it or from, from below there. So the daily zone goes on as well. Look at that. Really, really strong. Now, if we change the chart to, say, 15 minutes, all of a sudden now, those yellow native uh, charts, uh, zones, will come to um, yellow. But then you will see, if you've not got enough bars, you'll get this little warning message up here, only 33 bars are loaded, you need at least 2,000. So right click, data series, click on bars, and just put 2001, click apply, the logic needs the data to work it out. So again, you see this big support zone that we, we were talking about earlier. That's still there, obviously. But now the yellow is now the 15 minute because that's the current time frame we're on. Okay, so these are the 15 minute time frames that were in blue before. Uh, and we could, uh, you know, go up to 240, for example. When it works the 240 out, we will only have that time frame in yellow. And then we'll have gray daily, you can see here. And then at some stage, you'll have a weekly if there's a strong weekly zone, and there isn't at the moment, not within uh, eye shot anyway. So you can see here on the 240, uh, the yellow is the current time frame, so that's native. And then the gray here is the, uh, the, the daily zone. Uh, and if we change instrument here, if we go to a, I don't know, we go to a Forex pair, for example, Euro, Japanese, Yen, something random, and we go back down to the five minutes, you'll see these here, it says 240 and everything like that. It's reloading, recalculating, the logic is doing its work. And there we go. So now we've got five, because we're on the five minute, 15, 30, 60, daily weekly zones so again we can see the weekly zone up here is pretty big we're on the five minutes so it's all the way this this big wide zone here there's a daily zone in there as well and we can see how much it respects there so we can switch off the weekly because it's probably not really going to affect us but it's good to know where it is that's why it's loaded up default to begin with slip switch off daily switch off 60 uh, we can even switch off the 30 if we want to and just look at the, the 15 and the current five minute time frame. See, we're breaking through this now. So it's probably good if we if there is any 60 minutes above or 30 minutes above to actually put those on because that's where the next resistance will be. So again, we're just breaking out of this 15 minute and five minute because you can see it just, just inside there as well. So now the next bit of fresh air, we're gonna find some resistance 146 on the 30 minute and then 60 minute here now again we can show the swings on here um and you know what will happen is um we'll see where this respects next and it will print them live as and when it goes is there any daily zones that's going to affect us no so we can just uncheck those that aren't and this is where we are so again if we've got a signal coming up to here, we're not going to go long into resistance, but when it breaks out, that signal is still good because we've broken out. We got fresh air up to that 146. Likely behavior now is to push up, come back down, test this as support, and then go again. What it does is frames your chart and keeps those um, guardian zones on your chart for multiple time frames to ensure you stay out of trouble. And that's what it is. You need it on your chart all the time. Hopefully that helps. Got any questions, please email info at globaltradingsoftware.com.